have a question for you. What's your favorite Apple product? For me, it's the iPhone. It's the original and as far as I believe, the best. Now maybe you don't actually have an Apple product, but chances are at least one person you know does. But did you know that all those amazing pieces of technology started as just one man's simple idea? When a guy named Steve Jobs was just 21 years old, he got this idea that computers should be easy for everybody to use. At the time, devices like cell phones were so big and bulky that they were difficult to use and even more difficult to carry around. Computers were big machines with so many confusing parts and complicated steps that people barely used them for anything. So Steve Jobs decided to create something new, different, and easy to use. He founded a company called Apple and has become one of the most successful companies in the world. But here's what's interesting about this story. Steve Jobs often gets all the credit for the Apple products we know and love, but the whole company wouldn't have started if he had worked alone. Does anybody know the names of the other people that helped start Apple? Well, another Steve, a guy named Steve Wozniak, actually made the first Apple computer. And the two Steves, Jobs and Wozniak, worked together on those very first projects. And they couldn't have done that without another guy named Ron Wayne, who wrote the business plan to get the whole company up and running. Without Wozniak and Wayne, Steve Jobs' idea probably wouldn't have gone anywhere. He needed to get together with Wozniak and Wayne to make his dream happen. If they hadn't worked together as a team, the world wouldn't have iPhones, iPads, or even MacBooks. The point of this story is this. We can make a bigger impact when there are more people involved. Sure, you can do a lot of great things on your own. You can have amazing, unique, and creative ideas to impact the world all by yourself. And you can even start working to make them happen with just your own two hands. But there is only so far you can go by yourself. When people step in and start working alongside you, the impact is bigger and the outcome is greater. Now look around this room. There are a lot of people in here with a lot of hearts, minds, and hands. So that means that what we're a part of right now as a youth ministry has the potential to make a huge impact. The problem is, I don't know if we all believe that's true. I think if we're being honest, we'd all probably say that there are times when we show up to church and don't really expect a whole lot to happen. We just move through the motions, sing the songs, play the games, pray the prayers, and call it a day. We've all felt that way from time to time. But when that starts to become normal, when that's the way we view church each and every week, we start to lose sight of the big picture. We miss out on the potential to make a big impact. Now, I think that probably happens for a few reasons. For starters, a lot of us show up to church looking to be impacted rather than make an impact. In other words, we're looking for it to make our lives better first. I know I've done this. I've been a part of church to get something out of it for myself and myself alone. And at times, I didn't think about how I could do something with my student ministry to help others. For some of us, we think of church as just a place we go to, not necessarily a group of people that we are a part of or a movement that can make an impact. So once we walk out the doors to go home, that's it for the week. Or maybe we don't even think that making a big impact is possible. After all, we are just a group of middle schoolers. What could we ever do that would make that big of a difference? But here's the thing. I think there's a lot more to our ministry than that. I look out and see an amazing bunch of students who have the power and potential to do something great together. And I want you to see that too. Did you know that the church actually started with a small group of people just like us? I'm not talking about this church or a specific church. I'm talking about the Christian religion that spread to billions of people over the past 2,000 years. That spread of Christianity is the greatest movement in history, and it started with just a few people coming together regularly, hoping to make some kind of impact. That's what makes the early church so fascinating. From where they started, no one could have guessed that they could have had any kind of impact at all. But after just a few years, they went from a small group of ordinary people meeting together to a big group of people influencing and impacting all of Rome, the most powerful empire in history. Over the past few weeks, we looked at a few different verses from Acts, a book of the Bible written by one of the first Christians, Luke. In Acts 17, Luke gave us a story that shows us just how big of an impact the church was having on the world at the time. 
This guy named Paul, who was one of the most important leaders in Christian history, was visiting a town called Thessalonica with a few other people. They got into town and did what Christians were so good at back then. They started telling people about Jesus. Some people listened to Paul and his crew and decided to join the Christian movement. But while all of this was happening, some of the townspeople got a little jealous of just how fast the church was growing. They couldn't explain how this small group of ordinary people was having such a big impact on the world. So they decided to look for Paul and his buddies to kick them out of town. They went to the house where the guys were supposed to be staying, but Paul and his crew weren't home. So instead of leaving or waiting for them to get back, they decided to drag Jason, the guy who owned the house, out to face the town leaders. As they started to question Jason, they said something that I think shows us just how big of an impact the early church was having at the time. And when they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the brothers before the city authorities, shouting, these men who have turned the world upside down have come here also, and Jason has received them, and they are all acting against the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, Jesus. Together, these guys were turning the world upside down. They were making the world a different kind of place, a better kind of place. And even the guys who wanted to stop it couldn't deny that it was happening. All kinds of people knew the influence that the early church was having. This small group of regular, everyday people had the attention of the entire Roman Empire. Even though they were small in number, even though they were intimidated or afraid at times, even though they weren't sure how it was all going to turn out, they kept telling people about Jesus. And every day, God was adding more and more people to their group. And what the leaders of the early church showed us back then is still true for us today. Together, we have a bigger impact. I realize it's pretty tempting for us to think, well, yeah, that was true for them 2,000 years ago, but we can never have an impact like that today. But stop for a second and think about where they started. They were a small group of people. They didn't have much money. They didn't have any special training. They didn't have a lot in common with each other. In other words, they were just like us. The early church may not have had a lot going for them, but what they did have made a huge difference. They had a relationship with Jesus and they had each other. And we have access to those very same things. Jesus offers us a relationship with him. Plus, we have each other. Whether you're brand new here or have been here a long time, you can be a part of what God wants to do through our church. And together, we can have a bigger impact. So let me ask you this. What would it look like for us to turn the world upside down together? Maybe that means we come together to make sure that everyone knows that they won't be judged, looked down on, or ignored if they joined us. Maybe that means we commit to serving the people in our community together. Maybe it means to work together to invite new people to be a part of what we are doing here. Or maybe it just means we decide to live the way God calls us to live, in our school hallways, on our teams, and in our homes. No matter what it is, we can do it together. Because together, we have a bigger impact. If we're going to make a difference, it's going to take all of us. If all of us choose to come together, we can make the biggest impact the world has ever known. So as you head out today, I want you to think about this question. What's one thing we can do together to make an impact?